Hey friends, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. Let's have some more discussion on what I'm calling the Saddle Hunter's Hitch. I'm assuming you've already seen the video introducing the Saddle Hunter's Hitch, which I needed to show you how I tie it before I climbed on it. I also have a demonstration climb where I use my rope climbing system to climb a tree without sticks, without steps, and without the use of a throw ball using just ropes, but I needed this saddle hunter's hitch in order to execute that climb. The name is a gift. It's a gift for my audience, the saddle hunters, as I hope you see in this and coming videos, it's practical usage in saddle hunting, and I offer it to you to add to your toolbox as you see fit. Today we're going to explore only some of the possibilities for this and then we'll get into the, some of those in, in other videos. I will also be cutting away to the lab to show you in detail how I tie anything that you see here in the woods. Okay, so first point of business, you already know that the hitch is attached to the tree using a toggle, a carabiner holds it to the tree. You know that it is loadable on either strand. You know it's simple to attach to the tree. I'll just demonstrate that real quick. Take a bite of rope, go around the tree. That bite passes through the two strands. I widen it to go around them and put my toggle or carabiner up like that. Cinch it. Here I've got my JRB ascender hitch attached to my saddle and I can immediately load that with my full body weight. Try to duck out of your field of view. I'm, I'm self-filming so you'll have to excuse my lack of production and judge me on the content. All right, so that is the basic hitch. We're gonna be talking about some variations on this and the first one is simply, well, what if I don't need both ends? What if I only need to load one side? Is there a better way to do it? Okay, so this is pretty basic and some of you have figured it out, but let's, let's go over it. This is the end of the rope and I have used a poacher's knot. I've got a video on the scaffold and the poacher's knot to attach a triple action carabiner. So I can affix the saddle hunter's hitch near the end of the rope and use that carabiner to close it. So I can never drop the carabiner. So let's do that real quick. Now the length of the, of the loop, you know, you can, you can tune that to your application. I open this carabiner. the same hitch it's just that let's move this is the JRB ascender hitch one-handed operation to get that up got my full body weight on that and of course I can't drop that and this loop here is handy for a number of applications it can be used to hold a minor load I wouldn't put my body weight on this because half of it is a load line and half of it is on the toggle so we only want to have a minor load but you could put a pack on there and what i tend to use it for uh, is storage of the rest of my line so for example if i want my rappel rope to be ready to go if i need to get down the tree in a moment's notice for any time you just never know why you need to get out of a tree quickly but you don't want your rappel rope laying all the way down to the bottom I am coiling up 75 feet of rope and I can drape it inside of that loop I could drape it in there I could secure it I could girth hitch it whatever however I want that uh, secure but when it's time to repel I can simply dump that and be ready to go okay let's remove that now now let's talk about how we get to a remote release on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it with what I call the drop bite option. So it's the same tie, but at this stage right here, instead of affixing my toggle, I'll show you in greater detail in the lab, I take the top strand, drop it through the bottom strand, and that's where my toggle goes. So 
So this is still a saddle hunter's hitch. It's just that I have one extra set of intersection here, but that's still not remotely releasable. How do I make that remotely releasable? I make it remotely releasable by not using a hard toggle, by using a soft toggle. In fact, I can use another rope or the rope itself. I take this end, I take a bite, I pass it through that loop. I snug it to the tree. I then take both of these loops, only one of them is a lock loop, but I uh, want to eliminate all possible failure modes. I take my carabiner and I put it through both of those. So in this configuration, I'm a little low on the tree here, so I'll have my knees on the ground to show you this, but or almost. So I got my full body weight on that. It's the same hitch. Holds my load. I can stay on it indefinitely. But at repel time, after I've repelled, or before I've repelled, I remove, all I have to do is remove the locking beaner. I need to attach a release cord. So I just got a small piece of cord here that I'll put on the carabiner. This becomes my release line. I repel to the bottom of the tree. And then I pull on the release line. If you watch what happens, one of those loops disappears. Give it a tug. And now if you pull on the load line, it disappears. Okay, so let's see how we tie that saddle hunter's hitch. Start with a bite of rope. The load line can go on the top or on the bottom. I usually put mine on the top, the same way I do the JRB hitch. And I simply pass that around the tree. Got a bite of rope around the tree. Take that bite, pass it through the two strands. I separate that and go around the two strands. And that is where my toggle is placed. That toggle could be a loose carabiner, or in this case, a carabiner at the end of the rope. I pass it up through those two strands and draw that tight to the tree. That's the basic saddle hunter's hitch. Let's tie the remote release variant. Okay, so the exact length, you'll have to tune that yourself in terms of how long you want your loop. I generally are on the side of keeping it a little long. I am going to take that bite in much the same fashion, pass it around the tree, pass that bite between the two strands. The top is my load line, the bottom is my release line, and I separate it and go around those two strands. So up until this point, we're exactly the same as the regular hitch. Now I'll be taking the top strand which is the, the load line, and I'm going to drop it through the bottom one, okay? Pass that through the bottom one. So, let's pause there. I am careful not to have any overlap of the rope when I'm going around the tree for this variant. When we're tying the standard variant, it really doesn't matter. But for this variant, because we want to make sure this cinch is really tightly, I'm careful not to have any overlap of the rope. The top is my load, the bottom is my release line. Now, if I were just going to fix that with a carabiner, I would place that carabiner right there. It's good to tie that a few times to get used to how to tie it and then draw it tight to the tree. But that is not remotely releasable. In order to make it remotely releasable, we have to use a soft toggle. And I just take the end of my release line and I create a bite and pass that through. That becomes, a, it's a doubled rope that becomes a soft toggle. I have the option of, of locking it now or later. I will lock it later. I'll bring that in really tight and snug and I make sure I've got no slack in it whatsoever. Then I take that carabiner and you'll see if I were to pull on this, that is how I release the hitch. And I've got these two loops here. What I do is I have to lock this one, but I don't want there to be any failure modes. I want, don't want there to be any chance you lock the wrong loop. And so I, I simply draw them the same length and then I lock both of them. Using the carabiner, I pass the carabiner through both 
of those loops. And in that fashion, the hitch is not releasable. There's no way to release it with that lock in place. It's safe, ready to take load. And I inspect it to make sure that I got no slack, no slop in there. At time of repel, the first step is to remove the carabiner as my lock. Now, this is important. If these two loops got intertwined and I'm at the bottom of the tree and I'm trying to pull on this and it accidentally had grabbed this, that, that would be a problem. That would be a problem. I wouldn't be able to release it. So before I repel, I make sure that these two loops, that there's no twists and turns and that they're not caught in one another. And now I'm ready to repel. I repel down to the bottom of the tree. I've attached my release line here to this carabiner. And then to release it, you give this a tug. Now it might require a fair tug on this. So I don't use power cord. I'll use utility cord, four or five millimeter utility cord. And it often requires two tugs, one on this, you'll feel the pop, and then a pull on the load line. So let's try that. So that has released, and now a tug on the load line. And a couple times I've needed to alternate between the two of those to get that released. Okay, let's tie it one more time. Pass it around the tree, load line on the top. I pass the bite through the two strands. You can see that. I widen it, go around, and pass the top strand through the bottom. Take my release line. I'm going to have a little shorter loops this time. Pass it th through. And this time I'll go ahead and lock it right away. And now when I draw that tight, you know, I'll put it whatever height I need it to be. When I draw that tight, I make sure get those loops the same size. When I draw that tight, it's crucial that I examine all of this geometry here and make sure that I don't have any surplus slack and that this bite is, is drawn nice and snug. Now I load it and of course I'm locked at time of repel. I release the carabiner, put my uh, release line on the carabiner. Last thing I do before I start my repel is make sure that there's no twists, turns, or, or one loop grabbing the other. I repel to the bottom of the tree and give this a tug and give this a tug. And, and it dispels. Again, sometimes you'll need to jockey that a little, but as long as there are no twists and there is no accidental catching of one bite with the other, you can get that off the tree and it's safe and secure. See you back in the woods. Okay, let's see that one more time. How do I set the saddle hunter's hitch for remote release? I'm working near the end of the rope the exact distance you need, well, you need to work that out for yourself, but I generally err on the side of a longer loop is better. And a shorter one, create my saddle hunter's hitch in the same way, take a bite, pass it through the other strands, widen it, pass it around those strands, drop the top line down through the bottom one, and then with my release line, or with a separate rope, but this is generally how I operate, I attach a bite, pass a bite of it through, and I'll immediately lock that. Just immediately take my lock and put it on. You can do it later, but I prefer to just get it all out of the way. Then I set it tight to the tree. I might want to walk it up a little bit. I might want to walk it down, get it exactly where I want it, set it onto the tree, and then I'll even up these loops. So they're the same size. And then I'm ready to load it with my body weight. There's my full body weight on the hitch. Okay, it's time to repel. Uh, you know, before that, let me just demonstrate with my full body weight on this. You know, if I if I try to pull on this, I, I can't do anything with. With this unlocked, which would not be normal, and my full body weight on this, look, I can't, 
you can't really move that. That's great. It jams really well. And that's the first step for rappel. It's just to unlock it. And then during rappel, that's when I put, before rappel, I put my release line here. Now you don't want to use any flimsy piece of material here because it takes a good amount of force to release this from the tree. You're going to want to use something fairly significant, maybe some four millimeter or five millimeter uh, utility cord, but nothing very bulky. But I've got that set and ready to go. And during rappel, when my body weight's on this, you really can't jam that, uh, unjam it. So now I have rappelled. I'm down at the bottom of the tree. Now it will take a little bit of force. Sometimes this is a little hard. It's definitely harder than the JRB hitch to release. Pull on that. Sometimes it takes a tug on both sides to get that to come down. But as long as you've got yourself a good quality release line and you're prepared to put some weight on it, you'll get that off the tree. So um, again, that would be the second option I've given you for a remotely releasable um, tether and rappel line. The first is the JRB hitch. That is my preference. It's just so smooth and it always works. It's just a little bit harder to tie or so I'm told. This is the second option and I'm looking forward to showing you a third in the near future. Thank you guys and be safe.